Hi, today we are revisiting a YAS boot by Custom Bootloader for mainly for that board. In this episode, I'm adding a new component called YASConf, which will handle configuration files for the bootloader. Additionally, I'm also integrating LittleFS, which is file system dedicated for embedded projects. I created a whole video about file systems that can be used in embedded world. If you missed that, here is a link. And also in the description. Grab your coffee and let's go! I need configuration parser to keep boot related parameters. For example, to specify which firmware and from where needs to be started. My idea of configuration file syntax is similar to any files, but without support for sections. Or at least for now, I just wanted to start as simple as possible. I aim to have nice data accessors, like in this example. During implementation I was working on test implementation in parallel, although not strictly following test-driven development. Since I created yasconfig as separate repository, I just wanted to verify correctness of my implementation before full integration with Yasboot. Architecture is simple. I have config parser that uses POSIX calls to manage files on file system. Parser creates config entries, which contain loaded keys and values inside single static local buffer. Thanks to that I can have long key and short value, or short key and long value, depending on specific usage. Size of buffer is configurable by a template parameter. Line parser removes trailing and leading way spaces from both keys and values. It would be really bad if some space at the end of the line breaks configuration. I also added a lot of white spaces inside the test file. My configuration entry has support to get next entry. I treat configuration file as a single direction list. But this may be changed in the future. For now, I haven't implemented any kind of in-memory buffering except lines in config entries. I don't need huge performance, so I prefer to get smaller RAM overhead since my environment is really constrained. Few lines of code and a couple of tests later, I added support for removing comments from the configuration file. And finally, also access operator that I was talking about on beginning of that part. For iterating full file, I added iterators to enable range-based loop support. And that's it. So let's revisit Yasboot. Some time ago I posted video about file systems that can be used in embedded projects. I decided to use LittleFS for storing configuration for bootloader and ROMFS to keep firmware image since it has execute in place capability. Today I'm going to add only LittleFS part. Unfortunately LittleFS is delivered without CMake, so I had to use Yaspin functionality to create static library. LittleFS relies on the block size. It must be a multiply of the flash memory iris block size. So I've chosen the minimal supported block by my flash memory, which is 4 kilobytes. I extended disk layout to provide this information for disk creation script. My idea was to create directory layout with configuration files on host machine. Then this creation script creates target file system, copies files from host to target, and then places it inside disk image. So my current disk layout contains MBR, gap for the first stage of YASBoot, boot partition with LittleFS file system, and two row partitions for placing image to be executed. Those two row partitions will be used in the future, and maybe I will create ROMFS file system inside it. Initially, I started adding LittleFS hooks directly inside the main CPP file. However, I dropped that idea. There is a lot of mess in main that must be cleared. I'm going to do cleanup of whole code base in next or even next few episodes. So I switch to creation of virtual file system. My goal is to support dynamically loaded plugins that can handle other file system types. Looking at example, I have clearly defined interface. Let me show a few functions on diagram like open or read. Then each file system that will be added for the ASBoot must follow that interface. I've started implementation of virtual file system with mount function. It involves reading from the flash hardware. 
to get access to the data inside memory, I added callbacks. I have utilized an EOL function for that purpose. The difference between std function and EOL function is that standard one uses heap allocation instead of static buffer. I allocated buffer for one single pointer. This memory is used, for example, to keep captures inside lambdas. Usage of just one pointer is enough to pass anything. LittleFS requires hardware-related configuration, so I introduced disk parameter class, which keeps necessary information, like read, write, erase, block, size, and blocks count. File system must be able to perform input-output operations on the disk. For LittleFS this is configurable via callbacks, that needs to be provided by the user. Those callbacks can be class member functions, since LittleFS is written in C. But there is user context parameter that can be used to keep object pointer and then IO functions are just trampolines to connect my LittleFS wrapper object with LittleFS implementation. LittleFS also requires an erase function and a sync function. But I'm using LittleFS in read-only mode. I have to check if I can omit them with just null pointer. Then it's time to create a new file system object within the main code. I've provided configuration details for the flash memory mounted on the MSPC board. The block count is constrained by the number of blocks allocated by the partition. To implement hardware input-output functions, I've used lambdas. Currently only the read operation is in use. Writing to the external flash will be more complex due to the shared usage of the same flash memory by the RP2040 for code execution and by me for storing data. After that, I added functionality of file system formatting by this creation script, starting from adding file system type in disk layout configuration. Since this creation script is written in Python, I was able to use Python LittleFS wrapper, which is provided by PIP. For current implementation, it's fine to place everything in single script file. But as I told you, I have to do refactoring of whole code base and modularize that script too. It doesn't only format partition, but also copies files to it. Currently I need only boot configuration file, but I added more files just for testing purposes. And it seems I have embedded version of segmentation fault. Yeah, I forgot to pass object pointer for function. But partition mounting is failing, so I had to debug what happened. Ok, I just configured LittleFS on the wrong partition, which could explain the issue. However, the problem still persists. I examined the image using hexdump and added debug prints. Everything seems to be correct. Finally, I discovered the root cause. The low level read function should return a zero, which corresponds to LFS error OK, instead of the number of bytes that was read. This was the missing piece of the puzzle. I enabled read and write temporarily, which enforced me to extend free space gap for the first stage of Yasboot. I am using the new lib library as libc, so I can implement system call stops to emulate a real file system API, similar to those found in Unix-based operating systems. This approach allows me to use POSIX functions for file manipulation. I created array of files, and I believe that 5 files should be enough for the bootloader. However, I may consider replacing this with container with dynamically allocated size in the future. Opening of file returns file descriptor that represents file. I am using std bit set to keep track of them. Nextly, I added a conversion function to transform POSIX to LittleFS flags. As I mentioned earlier, file systems can be added in the runtime using plugins. Due to that, I need to implement functionality that keeps track and provides access to mounted file systems. I considered using an EUL observer list for keeping mounted file system objects. However, heap allocation may be better approach here. RP2040 has a lot of RAM memory, and I don't even need to bother for deallocation. Whole memory will be reused by booted firmware. Of course, except offset tables for relocatable executables. So I just did it. I opened Pandora box. Starting from now, let's use heap allocation where it's more convenient. Panic implementation was waiting way too long. Let's do it right now. My mounting points holder keeps mapping between path and file system handler. For instance, if my little fs is mounted as boot, it will translate path 
boot path ATXT to path ATXT, which is relative to the file system, thereby skipping the mounting point part. The method for searching mounted file systems should return the best match, or in other words, the longest matching path. If path to the file is boot, fs1, file a, and there are two mounted file systems, boot fs1, which is from fs, and boot, which is little fs, access for given path should return rom fs handler. I can store file descriptors locally within little fs, since they are shared across all file systems. I've permitted the use of heap allocation, so I can transform the array of files into a map with the file descriptor as a key. For now, I'm limiting file descriptors to 8. This is more than necessary for bootloader, but in the future it should be configurable via keyconfig. The file opening seems to be functioning correctly. Let's attempt to read some file. To do it, I first need to locate the file system that manages the given file descriptor. That's why I've added an interface to check if a file system has an open file descriptor. And also read functionality. For littlefs it's a fairly simple wrapper. The file was read, but it contains some unwanted characters. Hmm, I'm not ensuring a null character at end of the string. Let's fix that. Good. Finally, it's time to replace file reading with processing via yasconf. Yasconf uses POSIX functions, so it should work without any changes, since I implemented stubs for newlib. And indeed it does. Having prepared file system and configuration files, I believe I can start Southbridge implementation. In the future I'm planning to introduce more file systems, also those that support executing place like ROMFS, to keep firmware inside it, but for now I can use just raw partition. But for the next episode I think I will start cleanup of my repositories. There is a lot of mess inside, so I need to do some housekeeping. I also did some research about using Rust instead of C++ in my project, but it seems that LLVM is not ready to support my dynamic loader yet. They have possibility to implement relocatable executable, but their solution does not fit to my dynamic linker implementation. But I have one idea what new I can try, and in the further episode I hope I won't burn my MSPC board when I will enable power for the rest of components, not just for the south bridge, but also for north bridge and for bus. For today, thanks for watching and see you soon!